Mitochondrial disease is a silent, insidious, uninvited member of our family, affecting six members. Our son, Brett, age 20. Our daughter, Brianna, age 16. Our niece, age 12. My sister, 38. And my mother, 72, and myself. All of us accept, affected to a greater or lesser degree by these infinitesimal structures in every cell of our body. We never expected to walk this path, but we are. Brett is attending Rochester Institute of Technology in New York. He travels around campus in a scooter so he can have enough energy to attend class and sustain his grades. Brianna just returned to school after being unable to attend her public school since 2005. She requires IVs through her central IV line in her chest. Alexandra, my 12-year-old niece, has severe mental retardation and autism as just one part of her mitochondrial symptoms. She functions as would a four to six month old baby. My sister struggles every day to work as a victim witness advocate in the district attorney's office, all while raising her devastated daughter and battling her own overwhelming fatigue. My mother has cardiac problems and difficulty sustaining her blood pressure, and me, I was an ICU trauma nurse. One day I was working to save patients, and the next day I was the patient who needed saving. Now I also have IV therapy to maintain my ability to think and stand and talk to you today. Medical disabilities in just one family member can cause extreme hardship. Two can seem insurmountable, and when the number of family members affected rises higher than that, its effects are incalculable. But I want to tell you something that causes us almost as much distress. It's the repeated victimization of a system ill-equipped to cope with this and many other diseases. Spending our limited energy stores advocating for medications, insurance coverage, nursing care, educational plans in the public, and public school and in colleges is in itself a full-time job, and it's a job that's getting harder all the time. Here is just one example. After a year-long fight, an administrative law judge ordered our school system to restore our daughter's illegally terminated educational support. Our success over this hurdle was quickly forgotten when on the very day we won that battle, I received word that the decision was made to terminate her private duty nursing care, stating it was no longer necessary. That decision to restore Brianna's nursing care now rests in the hands of another administrative law judge. While our family may struggle with the medical and management challenges of having mitochondrial disease, we are, in a very real sense, a normal family. We still have the same dreams. Hopes and desires for our children that non-ill family, that desires for our children's success in a life that parents of non-ill children have. We just have to think harder about how we define that success. For my sister and her daughter, success is defined by a day when Alex is able to wrap her arms around her mom with deliberate purpose. My own definition of success is, is ever-changing. As I have lost more and more of my own endurance, I have found purpose in sharing this path our family walks with others. I hope that in spending my daughter and my precious energy reserves to educate others, that it will be a wise investment towards proactive health policies for their future. Thank you. I'm good. I'm gonna go sit. Okay. Okay. Go sit. Your duty is. Oh, hello. Got it. Okay. Good. Okay. 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 Hi, I'm Brianna Kucher, and I'm 16 years old. <laughs> the first thing that I would like to say it is that it is very hard to get out how I truly feel. It is hard for me to describe what it is like to be disabled with mitochondrial disease. 
because when you live with it your entire life, you feel like it is normal. I was diagnosed with mitochondrial disease when I was three months old. But I first realized I was different from other kids when I struggled with reading and writing in the third grade. I always strived to do my best in school, but at times, my best didn't seem good enough. Being diagnosed very young, I had to learn how to conserve my energy. Lots of things that you take for granted in your day, I have to make adjustments so I would be able to do it. For example, many people can go nonstop throughout their day and never have to worry about having heart problems, severe leg pains, or having their bodies just not work for them. My heart can go really high or really low, and this is one of the scariest parts about my disease. I never know what my day is going to be like. I try always to expect the best, but I always have to prepare for the worst. Recently, things changed for me. In 2005, I got extremely ill for about three months. I was in and out of the hospi hospital and the intensive care unit trying to get my blood pressure and my heart rates to be stable. No one really knows much about how to help with these types of symptoms and it is really terrifying for me. Again, I had to change my way I had to live. I was homeschooled because I needed intensive medical care, like the IV I am on today. There was a lot of stress and chaos during those months because my family not only had to care for me, but they had to fight for, the educa for my education so that I could go on with my life altered as it was. At that time, I started to feel separate from the world I used to be in. I had to have nurses come and help my mom take care of me. I had to have a central IV inserted into not only my arms, but when those failed, one into my chest. I have to take IV before I can do things I used to do, just so I don't have any problems with my blood pressure or heart, ra heart rate while doing them. And this is just normal stuff like trying to go to school for a few hours a day. <sighs> All my life, I have to watch my parents fight for me and my brother. While other kids might remember going on long trips or vacations with their families, I watch my mom on the phone for hours calling insurance companies, doctor's office, social workers from the Department of Public Health, and of course, my schools. Most recently, they had to help my brother get his college to give him a handicap accessible apartment, which was not available to him or any other disabled kid. For me, they had to go to court and get the schools to follow my doctor's orders and now had to go to a hearing with three volunteer lawyers because my nursing care was stopped but I am thankful every day for my family. They are my touchstone, and they help me work out any situation I have. They encourage me to do anything I want, as long as it is medically safe. They fight for my rights and for, my, and for rights of other disabled people. With the support from my parents, my doctors and nurses, home teachers, and the use of technology like books on tape, computers, and extending my school year, I am now a high school junior at Pioneer Valley Performing Arts School. I am an honor student with a 3.97 grade point average. I want to go to college, study musical theater, and perform on Broadway. Hopefully one day I'm crossing my fingers. I know that my future as a disabled adult will be challenging, but I won't let that slow me down. I hope my future won't be hindered by healthcare decisions that won't allow me to reach my goals. I am more than just a disease. I am more than an expense or a liability. I want a future filled with all the possibilities and opportunities and more. Thank you.